Hi folks, welcome to the second key concepts video for chapter 5 in Math 521B, Pre-Calculus 11. In this video we're looking at radicals, specifically rationalizing denominators and dealing with radical equations. As always, standard disclaimers apply and there are downloadable notes and you can find a link to that in the video description below. The first topic here is rationalizing denominators. And we don't like radicals in the denominator of a fraction. It doesn't make that much sense to us intuitively to take 5 and divide it into root 2 parts. We would really like to have a whole number on the bottom there. And we can end up with that situation. We can manipulate fractions in order to preserve their value but manipulate their look. The only way to do that though is to multiply by 1 and 1 has many many forms. There's the number 1. There's the number 1, there's the number 1, there's the number 1, and so on. So anything divided by itself gives us 1. That's the key to changing the look of these kind of fractions. In scenario 1, we have irrational monomial in the denominator. So a single term that is irrational. I want to get rid of that root 10, so I want to turn it into a whole number. I could multiply it by root 10, and that's going to give me root 100, or just 10 in the denominator. But if I do it to the bottom, I need to do it to the top as well. So it'll give me 6 root 10 up top. We still have to look for opportunities to simplify. So 6 over 10, we know, reduces down to 3 fifths. And that'll give us 3 root 10 over 5. As always, we can check with the calculator. Are these equivalent? So the first expression was 6 divided by root 10. Let's see the decimal version, 1.9-ish. If I go 3 root 10 divided by 5, same thing. Okay, so it's just a different look. The second scenario is if we have a binomial in the denominator, so an irrational binomial. And in this case, we're going to use conjugates. And conjugates are pairs of binomials like this. Same numbers, one has a plus between them, one has a minus. And they have this special property. They multiply to a squared minus b squared. The middles are just going to be minus ab plus ab, so they'll be gone. And that means that if you had a square root to begin with, well, they'll get squared. Over here, we have 6 over 2 plus root 5. So the conjugate of 2 plus root 5 would be 2 minus root 5. If I do it by the top, I have to do it, or if I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top as well. And really this means that we're multiplying all of this out. There are brackets implied. Those are grouped. Okay, so the top is no problem. That's going to be 6 times 2, or 12, minus 6 root 5. On the bottom, I'm going to have 2 times 2 is 4. Now, if I were to write out the rest of the steps, I'd have minus 2 root 5 plus 2 root 5. And you notice right away that those are gone. Because we used binomial conjugates, that's always going to be the case. Finally, we're going to have root 5 times root 5. That's root 25, and it's negative here. So minus root 25, or just 5. This gives us 12 minus 6 root 5 all over negative 1. Okay, so we're happier now. We've got a, uh, a whole number in the bottom, or an integer in the bottom. We can divide out in this case. 12 divided by negative 1 is negative 12. And this will give us positive 6 root 5. Now you might end up with a case at the end where you still have something in the bottom, but it needs to be whole numbers that are in the bottom. So let's try a few of these. We've got th 2 over 3 root 6. Well, that's a monomial in the bottom. We could get rid of it by multiplying by root 6. And if we do it to the bottom, we have to do it to the top. So that will give us 2 root 6 all over 3 times root 6 times root 6. That's 3 times 6. Or 2 root 6 all over 18. And notice here, 
that you can simplify. 2 over 18 is 1 ninth. So our final answer should be root 6 over 9. In the next one, we have a conjugate, or we've got a binomial, rather, so we'll need to multiply by the conjugate. We have the minus 1, so we need to put in the plus. Remember that brackets are implied here. So when we work this out, we're going to get 6 times 7, that's 42. 6 times 3 is 18, root 2. Now let's check out the bottom. 7 times 7, well, that's 49. Remember that in the conjugate, it's not going to matter what happens with the middles. So all we need to look at is what's going on with the last. It's going to be negative every time. And it will be 3 times 3, which is 9, times root 2 times root 2, which is 2. That gives us 42 plus 18 root 2, all over 49 minus 18, or 31. There it is with the rationalized denominator. Similarly, in C, we've got a binomial, so we need to use these conjugates. So the conjugate of root 6 minus root 3 is going to be root 6 plus root 3. I do it to the bottom, so I need to do it to the top. That's going to give me 2 root 6 plus 2 root 3. Again, remember, brackets are implied here. Now look at what happens down below. We're going to have root 6 times root 6. That's 6. We're going to have root 3 times root 3. That's 3, so 6 minus 3. And those middle terms, we'd have plus uh, root 18 minus root 18, so those are gone. This gives us 2 root 6 plus 2 root 3, all over 3. Our second topic in this video is radical equations. We're only doing them for square roots. We're going to isolate a radical term. We're going to square both sides and then repeat steps 1 and 2 if a radical still remains. So that means get the radical term on its own, or get one of them on its own. We're going to solve, and then we have to check our answers in the original equation, because it may turn out that we found uh, an answer that works later on in the problem, but doesn't work under the initial restrictions. Remember that square roots cause some restrictions. You can't take the square root of a negative, and the square root of something will never give a negative. So this brings us to extraneous roots, and you'll be hearing about this in other sections of the course as well. By squaring an equation, an equation, we sometimes lose restrictions that existed in the original form of the equation. As a result, we can end up with extraneous solutions, ones that work in later steps but are not part of the original solution. This is why it's important to check your solution in a radical equation every time. Cross out these extraneous solutions that don't work in the original. And you don't have to be told to check. You know that whenever you have a radical equation, you should be checking. So let's get an idea of the process. It said isolate the radical term. So I'm going to get that radical expression on its own. Step 2, square both sides. Got it. So let's square this side and square this side. The square uh, root of something squared is just the original term equals 4. Now, we don't have another uh, radical expression, so we don't have to do step 3. We just solve. So x equals, according to this, 3. And the last thing we do is check in the original. So check x equals 3. The left side of that original equation was square root of x plus 1, so for us that'll be square root of 3 plus 1 plus 3. The right side was 5, this will be root 4 plus 3, or 2 plus 3. Does that give us 5? Yes. x equals 3 is a solution. I'm going to circle it so there's no ambiguity here. Let's try another one. We have x equals the square root of x plus 10 plus 2. So again, isolate a radical term. I'm going to leave that root x plus 10 on the right-hand side. 
and I'll just move over the two. Okay, now we'll square. And this is where some of the most common errors occur. We've gotten so used to doing the conjugate business where it was just first term times second term, uh, first term times first term, second term times second term, that sometimes we forget what squaring a binomial means. But when I see x minus 2 all squared, that is x minus 2 times x minus 2, which gives us x squared minus 4x plus 4. Don't be that person who writes x squared minus 4. Boo! Not good. Square the binomial means multiply it by itself. Gives us x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, the right side, it gets squared, and that gives us x plus 10. Now, this is a quadratic, so we need to make one side 0. So I'll move over that x, minus x from both sides, also minus 10 from both sides. I'm going to factor this and solve, though you can use quadratic formula if you prefer, but it'll take longer. So this will be x minus 6, x plus 1 equals 0. Each of those give us an elementary equation. So our potential solutions, our candidates, are 6 and negative 1. But each of them need to be tested. So let's check x equals 6. In the original one, the left side was just x, so that would be 6. The right side would be square root of x plus 10 plus 2. Let's see, that'll give us root 16 plus 2, or 4 plus 2. Hey, this one works great. So this is a solution, x equals 6. Let's try x equals negative 1. Left side here would be negative 1. The right side would be the square root of negative 1 plus 10 plus 2. Okay. Or root 9 plus 2. Or 3 plus 2. Or 5. Oh dear. The left side and the right side are not equal to each other. So this is not working at all. It worked in later steps, but not in the original. There's one of those extraneous roots we were talking about. So the final answer is just x equals 6. It is the only number that works in both of them. All right, let's deal with one that has uh, two radicals in it. So here we're going to isolate a radical expression. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to isolate that root 4x plus 5. So that means adding root 2x minus 1 to both sides. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. Root 4x plus 5 equals 2 plus root 2x minus 1. Let's check the steps again. Isolate a radical term. Nailed it. Square both sides. Don't mind if I do. So, we'll square them. This squared and this squared. Now, what does that mean? That means on the right side you have 2 plus root 2x minus 1 times 2 plus root 2x minus 1. Okay, square that and you're going to get 4 plus 2 of these root 2x minus 1's. Okay, so here was the 4. Here's that first 2 plus root 2x minus 1. Here's the next one. Gives us 2, 2x minus 1. And finally, plus 2x minus 1. I'm going to need more space. Because root 2x minus 1 times root 2x minus 1 will just be 2x minus 1. Okay, putting together some like terms, that's going to give us 4 plus 4 root 2x minus 1 plus 2x minus 1 or 2x 
plus 3 plus 4 root 2x minus 1. And I would do that off to the side so that you don't have to do that in a whole bunch of steps. And now we'll go back to the problem. So on the left hand side we're going to have 4x plus 5. On the right hand side we're going to have 2x plus 3 plus 4 root 2x minus 1. Okay, that's just what the right hand side squared was. Checking the steps, squared both sides, did it. Repeat step 1 and 2 if a radical still remains. Well, we haven't done it, but we're going to do it. So a radical still remains on the right hand side. I'm going to move over everything else, so I'm trying to isolate again. That's going to give me 2x plus 2 on this side equals 4 root 2x minus 1. Now, I could divide by 4 and really isolate that radical, but I'm going to get fractions, so I'd prefer to work from here. I've isolated, more or less, that radical term, and I'm going to square again. Okay, it just turns into one of those problems like we had in A or B. And I make sure that I multiply 2x plus 2 by itself, so that's going to give me 4x squared uh, plus 8x plus 4. On this side, 4 squared is 16. Root 2x minus 1 squared is 2x minus 1. Okay, keep on going. And these are some of the longer problems that you'll end up doing, but they're not necessarily difficult. Okay, now we've got a quadratic, so we need to make one side 0. Subtract 32x from both sides. Add 16 to both sides. That gives us 4x squared minus 24x plus 20 equals 0. Ah, common factor. I'll take it out. I'm really hoping that this factors. And if I like, because I've got that 4 there out front, I could divide both sides by 4 just to get rid of it. So I'll have x squared minus 6x plus 5. If you didn't want to do that, you didn't have to. Factor this becomes x minus 5, x minus 1. Elementary equations of x minus 5 equals 0, so x is 5. Or x minus 1 equals 0, so x is 1. Okay, so we did all that work. And now we're not even sure if these are correct. We have to go back and check. So our candidates here were 5 and 1. Let's check them out. Check x equals 5. On the left side, the left side we're going to need more room. The right side's just 2. So we would have 4 times 5 plus 5 minus square root of 2 times 5 minus 1. Okay, that's root 25 minus root 9, or 5 minus 3 gives us 2. Yay, 5 works. I'm going to go and circle it down here. It's a solution. Okay, let's check out x equals 1. So I would have the square root, the left side would be square root of 4 times 1 plus 5 minus square root of 2 times 1 minus 1, that's just the original equation, and the right side is 2. Let's see what happens. This will be root 9 minus root 1, or 3 minus 1. Does that balance the equation? Yes, it does. Works out. So these are both solutions. As always, word problems and applications are fair game, uh, but this covers the basic techniques for Chapter 5. I hope that you found this helpful. Um, don't be too discouraged by how long it takes to do, say, one of these two radical questions. Once you've done a few of them, they'll go fairly quickly, and it's the same thing every time. Isolate one, square, isolate another, square, and just solve. Uh, I'll be back for a Chapter 6 video pretty soon, so I hope you'll join me. Take care.